When a business acquires and sells inventory in the course of its operations, keeping up with inventory is extremely important. The inventory equation helps us do that. Beginning inventory plus inventory purchases minus ending inventory equals cost of goods sold. The components of this equation represent the flow of inventory as goods are bought and sold. The beginning inventory balance, also known as goods on hand, represents the inventory that is currently on hand from a prior period. The ending inventory amount from the prior period automatically becomes the beginning inventory amount in the current period. In the current period, the company may purchase more goods if those on hand are not sufficient. The sum of the beginning inventory plus the purchases made during the period equals goods available for sale. The goods available for sale represents the total amount of goods or inventory that is available to sell to the company's customers. The total amount of goods available for sale is then either sold or retained. If sold, it becomes cost of goods sold. If retained, it becomes ending inventory. Therefore, the cost of goods sold account, which is an expense account, is directly related to the inventory account, which is an asset account. Because when goods are sold, inventory decreases and cost of goods sold increases. Once inventory is sold, it comes out of the asset account and becomes an expense via cost of goods sold. However, if items are not sold, they remain in inventory. This equation can be written in a number of ways, and as long as we know three of the four parts of the equation, algebra can help us solve for the missing one. Suppose that a company starts the year with $10,000 of inventory and then purchases an additional $2,000 of inventory. An inventory count at the end of the year reveals that we have $4,000 of inventory on hand. This means that the cost of goods sold was $8,000. One of the primary misconceptions regarding inventory is that a company accounts for its inventory cost the same way that inventory is actually purchased and sold. There is instead a difference between the physical flow of inventory and the cost flow assumption, which do not necessarily go hand in hand. When a company purchases millions of goods in a given period, it is impossible to track the cost of one particular item. Therefore, assumptions become crucial. Suppose that company ABC purchased 15 identical units for resale. Although the units are identical, the company bought them at different times during the year and paid a slightly different price for each unit. From a physical standpoint, the cost doesn't matter because the units are identical. But from an accounting standpoint, it matters. Since the cost of each unit is different, the unit we sell will impact remaining inventory and cost of goods sold. When cost of goods sold is impacted, net income is indirectly impacted. From an accounting standpoint, the decision to sell the first or last unit or any other unit in the middle depends on the inventory cost flow assumption, also known as inventory valuation method. The inventory valuation cost flow assumption is an accounting assumption that avoids us the trouble of having to track exactly which goods are being sold. Because these goods are identical, the physical order does not matter. Inventory cost flow assumptions help accountants and businesses address issues that arise when identical merchandise units are purchased at different unit costs. When the items are sold, it is necessary to calculate the costs using one of the common inventory cost flow assumptions or inventory costing methods. The four choices are specific identification, first in, first out, FIFO, last in, first out, LIFO, and weighted average. Under the specific identification inventory method, the cost of the unit sold is explicitly stated with each purchase. This method of inventory valuation is usually reserved for high-priced and highly customized items. An example of a company that might use specific identification is an automobile dealer. Having merchandise at such a high cost 
automobile dealers who rely on serial numbers and specific identifiers for their products would be inclined to cost each item at their specific cost. Also, though some of the items may be identically made, many automobile dealers tailor their cars to the needs and desires of each of their customers, making the inventory highly specialized. The specific identification method is the only inventory valuation method where the physical flow of inventory matches the accounting flow. In other words, accountants keep track of the specific item sold and the cost of that specific item. The first in, first out FIFO inventory method is based on the assumption that the units purchased first are sold first therefore leaving the most recently purchased units in ending inventory. The flow of costs under the FIFO method typically follows what is considered a traditional way to think of how goods flow. A great example of this is perishable goods. Bread and milk expire very quickly. Therefore, when adding new bread and milk on the shelf, it's important to sell the older ones first. Remember that the inventory cost flow assumption is an assumption. If a company uses FIFO, it is assuming, for accounting purposes, that older units are sold first. This may not be the case if we actually track the units sold. The last in, first out LIFO inventory method is based on the assumption that the units purchased more recently are sold first therefore leaving the units purchased first in ending inventory. The flow of cost in the LIFO method typically goes against the normal way that people think about costs. Why would a company sell the most recent item first? Think about the gasoline industry. With constant fluctuations in the cost of a barrel of oil, the gasoline industry's prices change to keep up with the ever-changing market. Therefore, for conservative and matching purposes, these companies will elect to use the LIFO method of inventory valuation to reflect these changes. By using LIFO in this case, those companies ensure that their income statement reflects the true profit for a given period. Again, remember that the inventory cost flow is an assumption. If a company uses LIFO, it is assuming for accounting purposes that newer units are sold first. This may not be the case if we actually track the units sold. Under the weighted average inventory method, the carrying value of a unit of inventory is based on the weighted average cost of inventory purchases. This simplifies the flow of costs by averaging the cost of the units. By determining an average cost that will be used to calculate both the cost of goods sold and the ending inventory. In this case, the total cost of inventory is added up which is $21.90, and divided by the total count of inventory, which is 15 units. The weighted average cost per unit is $1.46. Each time the company sells a unit, it will add $1.46 to cost of goods sold.